We may be looking at the most tantalizing Martian clue yet. In a dried up river valley on the edge of an ancient lake, NASA's Perseverance rover has spotted tiny, leopard spot textures inside layered mudstones, pale specks with dark rims rich in iron and phosphorus, physically intertwined with organic carbon. On Earth, patterns like these often trace back to microbes, quietly rewriting the chemistry of the rocks that entomb them. Is this life on Mars? Not proof, not yet but it's one of the clearest, most coherent hints we've ever seen, and the next steps could finally tell us whether ancient Mars hosted living chemistry. Subscribe for deep dives into Mars, Webb, and the search for life. Since early 2021, Perseverance has been working inside Yezero Crater, an impact basin that once held a lake and a river delta. The rover's recent focus is a channel that cuts into the crater's western rim called Neretva Vallis. In the northern part of that valley lies a layered outcrop the team calls the Bright Angel Formation. This is where the story turns intriguing. Within those fine, rusty red mudstones, deposits laid down grain by grain in calm water, the rover's cameras and instruments began to pick out millimeter-scale dots and rings unlike anything seen elsewhere on Mars. They look almost like poppy seeds scattered through the rock, pale nodules encircled by thin, dark halos. And when Perseverance put its tools to work, those halos lit up with the chemistry of iron and phosphate. Inside Bright Angel, one rock drew special attention, Shiavar Falls. Close-ups revealed those nodules ringed by dark rims that Perseverance's instruments identified as rich in iron and phosphate, two ingredients that, on Earth, often trace the footprints of microbial metabolisms. Planetary scientist Joel Hurowitz captured the team's reaction. When you see features like this in sediments on Earth, the minerals can be byproducts of microbes consuming organic matter. Astrobiologist David Flannery made a similar point. On our planet, textures like these often show up right alongside the fossil record of subsurface microbes. The point is not, we found fossils. The point is that the textures and the chemistry match places on Earth where life left chemical fingerprints. To push the investigation forward, Perseverance drilled Shai Ava Falls on July 21st, 2024, collecting its 25th core sample. The team named it Sapphire Canyon. Early readouts from the rover's toolkit painted a picture scientists politely describe as mysterious. Some signatures point to chemistry that potentially involved organics. But the instruments on a rover, millions of kilometers away, can only go so far. As research scientist Morgan Cable framed it, we see that chemistry happened and it may involve organics. The question is whether life mediated those reactions or whether water rock processes did it alone. That is exactly the kind of ambiguity Perseverance was built to surface because the mission was designed with the next step in mind, bringing samples home. So what exactly has the team described? Tiny nodules and specks enriched in iron phosphate and iron sulfide, physically associated with organic carbon, and apparently formed after the sediments were laid down. That pairing, iron phosphates, sulfides, and organics together, is a big deal. The leading explanation is that organic molecules participated in redox reactions, electron swapping chemistry that transformed the original sediments under relatively low temperature, oxygen poor conditions. On Earth, microbes routinely drive these redox chains. In cold, oxygen limited lakes, for example, microorganisms convert sulfate into sulfide, and in the process, they alter the iron and phosphorus chemistry around them. That is why the combination of organics, iron phosphates, and sulfides in Bright Angel raises eyebrows. It doesn't prove biology, but it does say the rocks record a story of electron-moving chemistry that, on Earth, life often writes. NASA's language is careful for a reason. These are potential biosignatures, features that might have a biological origin but require more data before anyone can conclude either way. Lindsay Hayes, senior scientist for Mars Exploration, emphasizes that potential is not a hedge. It's the correct scientific label when multiple lines of evidence line up, but ambiguity remains. In Bright Angel, the lines include textures that look like growth and alteration fronts. 
minerals, iron phosphates and sulfides that often tie to electron transfer chemistry and organic carbon co-located with those textures. All of it sits inside clay-rich mudstones, which are the best natural vaults for preserving delicate chemical records. That is why these rocks have the team's full attention. They look like the right rocks, with the right chemistry, in the right context. There's another breadcrumb in Bright Angel, greenish flecks that may be the mineral vivianite, a hydrated iron phosphate that often forms in oxygen-limited, reducing environments. On Earth, vivianite sometimes blooms where microbes consume organic matter in sediments and, in the process, pull oxygen from iron and phosphorus. If vivianite truly sits alongside sulfides and organic carbon in these mudstones, it strengthens the idea that Jezero's lake once hosted the right ingredients and the right energy gradients for metabolism to leave a trace. And even if vivianite turns out to be rare in these rocks, the fact that it's on the table tells you the chemistry is living in the same neighborhood where biology likes to operate. What would proof look like back on Earth? In laboratory clean rooms, scientists can slice cores thinner than a human hair and map minerals, elements, and isotopes at micron scales. They can test whether iron phosphate rims and iron sulfides formed in sequences that match known microbial pathways, or whether their textures better fit slow, purely chemical precipitation. They can examine isotopic ratios of carbon, sulfur, and iron that are notoriously hard to mimic with inorganic processes. They can look for ensembles of organic molecules arranged the way metabolisms tend to leave them, distributions that imply selection and processing rather than random synthesis. In short, Earth Labs can ask questions the rover cannot. Not just what is here, but how did it form, in what order, and does the pattern look biological? Even if the final answer is abiotic, the chemistry is profound. Redox reactions that shuffle electrons using naturally occurring organics tell us Mars wasn't a static, frozen desert. It was reactive, it cycled elements, it hosted water long enough to allow complex chemical gradients to form, the kind of gradients that, on Earth, power ecosystems from lake beds to deep sea vents. Not proven isn't a dead end, it's a map. It tells future missions where to look, what to sample, and which instruments to build. It says, this is the layer cake where the action happened. This is the chemistry to interrogate. This is the time window when Mars had the conditions that, on Earth, often precede biology. And that advances the search even if the final call is no life required. And yet, there's an elephant in the room. To answer the life question, we need those cores in Earth Labs and Mars Sample Return. The program designed to do exactly that is in limbo. Budgets are tight, priorities shift. And designing a mission that picks up sealed tubes from another planet and launches them into space is, in every sense, rocket science. Perseverance has pushed in situ analysis to its limits by design, but the team is transparent. This is where the rover's toolkit tops out. As project scientist Katie Stack Morgan has put it, the payload was selected to reach the threshold of a potential biosignature and then hand the baton to Earth-based instruments. To read the fine print of ancient Martian chemistry, we need the microscopes, spectrometers, and isotope labs we can never cram into a rover. Until then, the best we can do is identify the most promising cores, cache them carefully, and be honest about the limits of what we can infer from billions of kilometers away. Quick note while we're here, if you're enjoying this kind of evidence-driven storytelling, tap like. YouTube shows it to more curious minds. Perseverance will keep scouting the best outcrops, prioritizing clay-rich layers where organics and fine textures are preserved. It will continue to document the contact zones and bedding planes inside Bright Angel and beyond, hunting for the triad that matters most. Texture, mineral, and organic signals co-located in the same microenvironments. The team will run down every non-biological route for making iron phosphate rims and sulfide specks, 
testing how groundwater, temperature, and time could mimic the patterns life makes. That skeptical loop is not a roadblock. It's the engine of discovery. If biology is the better fit, it will survive every alternative explanation we can invent. If geology wins, we gain a sharp, testable model for how Mars made complex chemistry without life. Imagine either headline. If it's life, we learn that biology is not unique to Earth. The universe did it twice, at least, and likely many more times. Every ocean moon, every ancient river delta, every exoplanet with rain and rock and time becomes fair game for the same process. If it's not life, Mars still turns out to be a world where organic chemistry and water interacted long enough to build complexity. Exactly the kind of playground where life often begins. Both outcomes change how we search. Both reshape the odds we place on life elsewhere. And both justify the push for sample return because either result will refine where we look next and what we bring to look with. Here's where we stand. In Yezi Ro's Bright Angel Formation, at a rock called Shayava Falls, Perseverance has found textures and minerals, iron phosphates and iron sulfides, physically intertwined with organic carbon inside clay-rich mudstones laid down in an ancient lake. The chemistry points to post-depositional radox reactions in cold oxygen-poor conditions, the same kind of reactions microbes drive on Earth. NASA calls these potential biosignatures because that's what they are, compelling, testable, and not yet conclusive. The Sapphire Canyon core from Shiava Falls is sealed. The case is open. To close it, we need the samples here, under our strongest microscopes, in the hands of instruments that can read the story these rocks are trying to tell. Whether that story is biological or not, it brings us closer to the truth about Mars, and to the answer humanity has chased for generations. Were we ever not alone?